So normal modes are nice. We've talked about normal modes, but they aren't really what you think of as a wave, right? When you think of a wave, you probably think of this. That's a wave, you know, a pulse just blasting down the medium. That's what I think of as a wave. So we're going to describe that kind of wave now mathematically. So we call it, if we have to give it a name, a traveling wave. And yes, I'm going with two L's because it's my class. Okay. So traveling wave, the way you define it mathematically, any function of the form f of x minus vt um, solves the wave equation. How could that be? Any function would have to do any work. We just write a function that solves a wave equation. Surely that's not the case. But it is true. Any function, as long as the um, independent variables x and t show up in the form x minus vt, it'll solve the wave equation. And it will move as a traveling wave at velocity v. So let me show you that this is true. Okay? So we're not even starting with a wave equation. We're just describing a function that's a function of space and a function of time. And everywhere we have those variables, it's written x minus vt. So we're going to prove it this way. So let's think about <coughs> dy dx. So that would be just the slope of the string or of the, the medium. So we're going to use something called the chain rule where you can rewrite dy dx as dy dx minus vt because that's our independent version of the variable. We know that it's always in terms of x minus vt. dx minus vt dx. Okay? That's just true. It looks like we're doing it with algebra or something, like we're canceling out. It's not really quite that simple. This is just a true property of partial derivatives. We don't want to get into proving it and all that stuff because this is not um, a math class. But if you look at it, you realize dx minus vt dx is 1. This just means the partial of that little function with respect to x, so it's 1. So dy dx is the same as dy dx minus vt. And then if you repeat, you can show that d2y dx2 is d2y dx minus vt2. So it's also true for the second derivative. Okay, So let's put a line around that. And it only works because this your function, whatever it is, only shows up with an x minus uh, vt. Let's do dy dt. dy dt, by the same logic, or by the same dogma that I'm giving you, must be dy dx minus vt dx minus vt dt. Right? And now this part does not equal 1. It equals minus v. Okay? So this equals minus v um, dy dx minus t, vt. And if you do it again, you get the second derivative, and it pulls out another minus v, which becomes v squared. So d2y dt2 equals um, v squared d2y dx minus vt2. So we know this is also true for functions f of x minus vt. So let's um, solve for d2y dx minus vt2 and equate those two terms. And yeah, it got kind of messy there. But you see what we're going to do? This one, uh, d2, this one says dy dx is on this side, or d2y dx2. And then we solve this one for d2y dx minus vt2, and it's 1 over v squared d2y dt2. 1 over v squared d2y d t2. So without quite as much drama, we have created the wave equation again. 
but we made no assumptions about strings or tension or forces or physics or Newton's law. We really just found that the wave equation is a property of functions f of x minus vt. You can think of it as a property, sort of. And we know since this is the wave equation that describes how fast something moves in a medium, we know that the v that goes here is the speed of the perturbation in the medium. Okay. So seeing <laughs> a traveling wave function, the solving is pretty easy, right? right? Any function f of x and replace the x with x minus vt, and suddenly it's a solution. Now, in terms of physics, you need it to be realistic. Okay? You can think about what is a realistic solution. If I plot uh, y versus x and say I'm going to plot the exponential function like that, it goes up forever. Right? Uh, if I just put e to the x minus vt, it's not really a reasonable waveform. A reasonable waveform needs to be something that sort of remains finite. A sinusoid. An infinite sinusoid's okay, right? It can go on forever. A uh, Gaussian's a good waveform, because that can just propagate forever. A square pulse is a good waveform. So things that go to infinity at the ends don't really make reasonable waves, but mathematically they actually do solve the wave equation. 